Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to cover the uh, Leaving Cert 2022 Section A short answer questions from the DCG higher level paper. As always in these videos I'm going to do A1, A2, A3 and A4 in that sequence, okay? Um, with these questions there's always four questions, you'll have to attempt three of them to get the full marks, okay? Each question usually worth 20 marks each. Okay, so starting here we're going to start with A1, okay, which is a skew lines question in this case, so I'm just going to zoom in on that there now. We did nice and big on our screen. Okay, so there is our first problem. It says, question A1, the image below shows the booms of two cranes. Okay, so you can see two cranes here in the little kind of um, image that they're after giving us. The crane booms are represented by the skew lines A, B, and C, D on the right. So ele elevation of A, B, and C, D in plan view. Part A, determine the projections of the shortest horizontal line between the two the skew lines. And part B, determine and indicate in millimeters the true length of this line. Okay, um, so what we have to do essentially here is we have to create a plane. This is a skew lines question. So a lot of this question is actually going to be using our sliding set squares. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a plane um, parallel to one of these lines in elevation to get a true length in our plan view. Um, just looking at the problem here now, I could do this way or I could go that way as well. Parallel. No, I think the one I'm going to go, so I'm going to go parallel to CD. Just depends on the object at times. So parallel to the line CD, and I'm going to do that from point A to locate a new point, which we'll then call P. So parallel. All I've done there is I've gone parallel to CD um, from point A. And from B, I'm now going to use my T-square, and I'm going to do a horizontal line from B. Okay, and what I've now found right there is a point which I'm going to label as P. Now, I have to find P in my plan view, so how do I find that in my plan? Well, first of all, like in any orthographic drawing, P has to be directly below in the plan view, so it's somewhere down along that line that I've just projected there, and I'm going to follow the same sequence, parallel to CD from A. So in this case, I do the exact same thing in my plan view, parallel to CD in my plan, and I'm going to do that in from point A. Point A in my plan is here. Okay, and I've now found technically what I'm going to call as point P. So that's point P there. And we know P connects to B. And what's helpful about that line then is the line from P to B is actually going to be a true length. Okay? The reason that line is a true length from P to B is because the line PB is parallel with the XY, in, uh, XY line in elevation. It's parallel to one of our principal planes, the XY line. Therefore, in the plan view, we're going to see that as a true length. Now, what's helpful about that is when we look along the true length, we will then see that plane, uh, the plane ABP, as an edge view. Okay, but really all I want to see is the line AB, but I'm also going to then see the line DC parallel to that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up an X1, Y1, perpendicular to the true length. I'm just going to get my other pencil here. Okay, so there is my X1, Y1. Okay, and now I'm going to project out perpendicular to that. So A will come out, then C. Point B and point D. I think that should be enough. And what I want to know is, using my compass, I project it from the plan. I'm going to take my heights from the elevation. Now, what's helpful here straight away is point C is already on the ground. So, technically, this point here will be C1. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the height up for A. Now, what I usually do here, just to make sure I get the exact height, I usually line these up. So, I always want the exact heights. Now, it looks like D and B are at the exact same height as each other. Okay, so I'm going to take the height for A first of all. X, Y line up, project from the plan, take your heights from the elevation. From A, mark it out. Now I'm going to take the height for D and B. For A actually, 
What do you draw them? Yeah, I'll just mark them. There is B and D. Okay. So there we have it. There is B1. And I have now D1. Now I'm going to redraw those lines in. Nice and light. Um, the line CD. And before I actually draw it in, all I'll do is I'll check that they're parallel. Yeah, actually it's quite good in this question now. Good sharp pencils. So there is the line AB and the line CD. Okay, now I'll just label that as well. There's A1. So I've now got the line AB and I've got the line CD. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up an x2, y2 to get the shortest horizontal distance. We're going to set up an x2, y2 perpendicular to our x1, y1. So, perpendicular to our x1, y1, we're going to set up an x2, y2. Okay, I'm going to label that x2, y2. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to project out all those points. And those two should have been in the same. There we go. C will actually just come straight out because it's on the ground line. And A as well. There we go. Now, rule of thumb here is you're going to take your distances from the previous X, Y line back. So now if I want to find the distances for those points, let's say I take D, I'm going to mark from the X and Y one back to D. So there's the distance for D. Come out to D, mark it from the X to Y2. That'll be D2. I'm going to do the exact same for B. It's quite small in here, so I want to be just a little bit careful. Yeah, I'm happy with that. There's B. I'm going to do the exact same thing. There's B. Now C is... Make sure I'm on the money. It's quite small here. There's a good sharp compass. Now I'll mark C out. So on this line, and finally A. There's A, and mark A out. Okay, once again, labeling. So this now will be A2, C2, and the one up here is D2, and B2. Now, what we're going to see is these two, li two lines, when I connect them up, they should cross each other. Okay, draw them in. They should cross each other. And at the point they cross, will technically be the point where they are at the shortest horizontal distance to one another, right in there. So that point right there. Now what we have to do is simply project that backwards through our views, to our X1, Y1, and then our plan, and then to our elevation. And what we should get in elevation, if we're accurate, is a horizontal line. So, working backwards, projecting parallel, from this point in here. Okay, and what I'm getting in there is a line that is going to be where it's intersecting the DC line. I'm going to project back the other way. That point there is on the CD line. And this point here is on the AB line. What you're going to see in the plan view is a line like this. That is the plan view of the shortest horizontal distance. And now we just have to simply get the elevation. To get the elevation, this point here, I'm going to project it up to the... Seems to be hitting right there. Now, what I usually do at this point, once I have one of them, because it's the shortest horizontal distance, there should be a line in elevation that is going to be horizontal. So, what I'm going to do here is, I'm just going to, first of all, test out by drawing a line across. And if we're accurate, let me just see what Max is like, I'm a little bit out, I think. A tiny bit out. Okay, you can see my little bit of inaccuracy here. Okay. And it's extremely hard to be 100% on the money at these, these kind of little questions here. So what I often do now is just kind of go over it a little bit darker with a pencil like that. Okay. And there we have our shortest horizontal distance, SHD. 
okay um very very hard to be exactly on the money like there's a discrepancy there depending on the thickness of the lines okay and how you could do it okay so you can see here uh when you're trying to get the short horizontal distance it was extremely close okay like realistically i could have just connected them like that but because it's a horizontal line my t-square should come across like that okay so there we have it and uh, that there is the first question now we're on to the second one it says here determine and indicate in millimeters the true length of this line now what's helpful about this is i actually have nothing else left to do here it's just simply a case i'm going to tick it off it's simply a case of recognizing where i see it as a true length okay because the shortest horizontal distance of this line is from here to here because that line is horizontal and it's parallel with the xy line in elevation like i previously said with the line bp being in a true length okay because the line bp in elevation was horizontal and it was parallel with the xy line that makes it a true length in plan therefore because this is horizontal therefore this line here will be a true length in our plan view so what they want us to do is indicate it in millimeters the true length so i'm going to measure that and i'm going to say it's 19 millimeters is what i'm saying 19 millimeters okay and that there is the true length of the line determine indicate in millimeters the true length of this line okay and i have clearly identified that or mark above it true length okay i'll say true length and then in brackets s h d true length shortest horizontal distance okay so there we have it there is the first question completed on that page now what we're going to do is we're going to move down to a2 so here's question a2 and it says uh, the image below shows the parabolic bridge at mizzen head in county cork the drawing below and you can see a little pictorial of it here the drawing below shows the axis aa1 so we've got our axis line the focus f they've given us the focus and two points p and q on a similar parabola so we've got two points on a parabola part a they would always tell you what to find first locate the directrix so that's step number one and then locate the vertex and the vertex or so directrix one vertex two and draw a portion of the parabola which shall pass through the points p and q and part b draw a tangent to the curve at point q okay so what we're going to do here is we have to first of all find our directrix now they've given us the axis and what's important to note is the axis is going vertical therefore a directrix is going to be a line that is going horizontally or i should say perpendicular to the axis line now the method here for finding the axis has to do with using the points p and q in relation to the focus so what we're going to do is from point p okay if i take my compass and i put it on point p and i mark the distance into f and i swing an arc like that sorry if i put it on point p apologies see it a bit better screen and just do that I swing a point from f I swing an arc from f i should say and then from p parallel to the axis make sure i'm using the right pencil here from p parallel to the axis i want to do a line vertically like that technically that there is a point on my directrix okay now i can do the exact same thing okay to find it but uh from q i could do uh sorry uh, compass point from q to f do an arc and then do a vertical line and you'll get another point and technically has two points in the directrix you could connect it up but technically once i had one because i have the axis the directrix is perpendicular to it so it's really easy then with my directrix i simply just come along here and i do that and usually with directrix you mark it d d1 kind of like the axis a to a1 okay now you could come along as i said from q put this in and you should end up getting it and you'll see there if i put it in from f it'll meet like a tangent as well okay and where the two curves then you just simply connect the line like a tangent okay so there we have it we've now found our directrix now to find the vertex all we want to do is where the directrix and the axis meet is a point right here and because we're using a parabola the eccentricity is one is to one for a parabola okay so that means I'm going to go at 45 degrees because for every one centimeter out i would measure up one centimeter as well okay or two out two up therefore it's going to be a 45 degree line so that line there is going to be my line of eccentricity and to find the vertex i'm going to project back perpendicular to that at four i should say perpendicular sorry 45 degrees and where it hits the line of eccentricity i'm going to drop it here and what i've now found right there is my vertex 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing in that portion of our curve. So from the focus, we're going to do what's known as the lattice rectum, which is a line that goes parallel to the directrix through the focus. Okay, and now we need to find a series of points on our curve. So in between the vertex and the focus, I'm going to find one more point. So I'm going to do a line up and down like this to hit the line of eccentricity. Okay, uh, after that then, I've got one on P. So I'm going to do a line like this to hit the line of eccentricity. I'll do one in between P, another one there, and then I'll do one for Q. You can see it's obviously going into our picture. So I'm only going to draw maybe this portion of it. I won't continue it all the way down here. Now, to find those points, what we're going to do is everywhere that I did a cut section through it, okay, where it hits the line of eccentricity, I'm going to drop it par down parallel to the axis. And these points up vertical, all to hit the lattice rectum line. Okay, now from the focus, what we're going to do is simply go from here, wherever those cut lines were on the lattice rectum, so that one there, first of all, you can see that little distance I'm marking here. All I'm going to do with that is just make sure I'm exactly on it, sharpen my lead a bit. So swing an arc there to cut this side and this side. That gives me an additional two points. Now I'll go to this distance and I'm going to swing it this way the opposite side. There's that one. And obviously P is already got, so I'm happy with that. Out to the next one. Swing an arc. And at this point, I'll mark that one in there. And then from Q. Yeah, shall I put it in? It's hard to see it there, but I can see it on my page. Okay, so now what we're going to do with all those points found accidentally sorry i forgot to note that i do have one directly above the focus where the focus line or the lattice rectum line cuts through the line of eccentricity forgot to find that one i have one there and we the mirror images at the opposite side so there's another one so all we want to do now is through those points i have a point here I'm sketching that curve even though we can't see it there let's sketch it in And when it comes into the vertex, it will curve around like this. Through that point there. That point and that point. And I'm going to continue through those points. And there we have it. Okay. Now, just a little bit heavier with the pencil now. We try and make it look like one continuous curve. So there's my vertex, on through the vertex, up through this point. I often like to move around the page as I have it in, and down to here. So that's the first part of the question, which is probably where the bulk of the marks are going to go. Okay, so there is a portion of my parabolic curve going through P and Q. Done that. Part B, draw a tangent to the curve at point Q. So what they want us to do is to get a tangent. Now there's two methods you could do for this. Uh, the method number one that I kind of like to do, especially when we have the directrix given to us as well. Method number one, from P, I'm going to connect, from Q, or sorry, from Q, apologies, that's the one they still need to do it. From Q, I'm going to connect it to the focus. And what I want to do is, perpendicular to the line I've just drawn, I'm going to do another line. Perpendicular to that, through the focus. So the relationship between the two lines that I've just drawn there is that they're perpendicular to one another. Okay, but what's helpful about that line is where this one goes perpendicular through the focus, okay, and it cuts through the directrix, that is a point on my tangent. So now that I've got two points and I know it touches the point Q, I can now draw in my tangent. Okay, that is the second part of the question. The other way that we could have done that would have been if we connected Q to F and I did a vertical line from Q to the directrix and that angle inside there, if I bisect that angle inside there, I should also get my tangent line.
Okay, that is the other method of how you could do it. There's two ways. The method that I often quite like to use is from Q to F and perpendicular from F through uh, to this line where it hits the directrix connected on. Okay, that there is the second question complete there, guys. Um, now we're going to move on to A3 at the top right of the page. So I'm just going to move this over and bring it up. Let me fit this nicely on our screen. Okay, so A3, this is uh, interpenetration or intersection of solids question. Okay, and um, it says here, the image below, uh, the image below shows a design based on a prism intersecting a square base pyramid. So a square base pyramid, and we have kind of a square prism intersecting through it. Okay, the drawing on the right shows the incomplete elevation and plan of the intersecting solids. So we've got the plan view fully, not fully completed, elevation not fully compute, completed. Part B, complete the elevation, or sorry, uh, part A, using the given X1, Y1, draw an auxiliary elevation of the intersecting solids. So they tell us here the sequence they want us to do. So I can't do B until I've done A. So using the given X1, Y1, draw an auxiliary elevation uh, of the intersecting solids. So they've given us the X1, Y1. They want us to redraw what the view looks like when we're looking in the direction of the pencil there. Okay, and then part B, complete the elevation and plan of those intersecting solids. So really what we're asking us to do is look in such a way that I'm looking at the object so I can see the true shape of this surface and where it's cutting exactly through it. So all we want to do now is we're going to project out all our lines parallel to this guy here. Okay, to these projection lines there, or I could just say perpendicular to the X and Y one. So these two are already out. Now I'm going to project out this one. So out from the very middle out and from here out okay they're the only three that i need because these two are already on the ground so it's a square base pyramid so i've got four points on the ground one two three and four okay i just need to find the the apex so i want to take the vertical height now what i often like to do is from the apex there mark down to the apex in the plan view I just like to get my measurement exactly. So I'll take that vertical height and I'm going to mark it up. So projection plan, mark your, take your heights from the elevation. Okay, and I'm going to draw that in now. So as I look at it, I'll see this face and this face. I'll actually only see that and that. I apologize, I made a mistake there already. Should have gone from here. We're about that line in a second. And here. Just get my over there. We're about that line. Apologies there. Okay. So there is the pyramid. And I, if I was to label it, okay, on a pyramid you'd only have five points, square base pyramid. I would have the four points on the bottom. I'm going to call them one, two, three, four. So there's one. Call this point in here two, three, and I've obviously got four, and then at the top point, I'll call it O. So look, I have O, then I'd have point number one, two, I'd have three here, and four there. So let's label them out here. Well, this would be one. I've got twos at the back, fours at the front, so I'll put on this side of the line, and I've got three out here. And then I've got zero there. Now, if I was to label the square-based uh, prism, okay, um, let's say I was to label that, let's say I did A here, then I had B, then I had C, and I had D. Okay, if I was to label those, well then I'd have A out here, then I'd have B on top, then I'd have C on the right, and I'd put D, comma D. Okay, so all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the heights for those as well. So A is on the outside, then I'd have B at the top, C, and D. Now I want to take the heights for those, so method I like to use, just connect A with A, just so I know 100% I'm getting the right measurement, B with B and D, and C and C. Okay, now uh, what I want to do is I'm going to take the height for A, which will be the same as the height for C, that would be helpful. So for A, I'm going to mark it up, there's A, and C will be on the outside. And then I'm going to mark up the height for D and B. So B first. So there's B, follow it out. Let's mark it up. And then D. Mark it up. 
Okay, I'm gonna draw that in now. I'm gonna heavy it in completely. So there is I'm not sure if this is exactly a square, but we'll check. Let's go and find out. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, close enough. And be exactly. There we go. So there is what the square looks like. This is where it's cutting into the object. And obviously we've got the edge here at the front as well. Okay, so there's the object. We've drawn the auxiliary view. Just zoom out a little bit there. Okay, we've drawn the auxiliary view in. And now what we have to do, that's the first part. What we have to do, complete the elevation and plan of the intersecting solids. So as this solid is cutting through, use the pictorial to help you out here. Okay, a bit hard to see obviously on the graphic there. But if you imagine, there's going to be kind of four edges here. I've got an edge in there. Okay, there'll be an edge running down inside there. There'll be another one here at the back and there'll be another one connecting down. So I've kind of got four lines on the top part where it's cutting through. And I would also have four lines underneath. So I'm going to focus on the top section first. Okay. Now, two points I can actually find straight away, which are on the edge running from 0 to 2 and 0 to 4. Okay. The line, as, as the object is cutting through, it's cutting directly on top of it. So 0 to 2 and 0 to 4. Technically, this would be a point right here. So I'm going to bring that down to my plan. And this will be another one. Okay, I've identified two points right there. There's one cut point, and there's the other. Okay, now I need to identify, I've technically found these ones. That one there, okay, at both the front and the back. Now I have to find the other two points. Well, technically, where they're cutting is at this point here, and at this point here. Okay, so I have to find those. Now, simply a case of working my way backwards. So like we projected out, now we're just going to project back. So from here, I'm going to drop it down. That would be one. And this one should be the other. Okay, I'm going to connect this edge from here to here, three to one. Okay, it should show me the cut points. There's one, two, three, and four. I found the four cut points on the pyramid. So I'm going to draw that in now. Because this is the top surface, I would actually see where it's cutting through. So I put them in. There'll be no hidden detail in these ones. Okay. And where students can often do questions, I still have to heavy in that little edge in there. That little edge there. Okay. So I've now got the top surface. Okay, and while I'm at it, I start to draw it in, in my elevation view. So I found this point. This is on the edge from 0 to 1, which will be up there. And this one will be on the edge from 0 to 3, which will be up there somewhere. So I'll connect 0 to 1. And that will give me a point right there. Just make sure, yeah. So I've got those points. There's the one at the front. So I'll start to heavy that in. Okay, and that connects over to here. So on this side. Now I can heavy that the whole way down as far as there. Okay, so there we have it. There's kind of the first bit. Now what we have to do is we have to get the hidden detail. Okay, which is this edge here at the back in regards to my elevation view. So this is at the back. So how do I find that? Well, I'm going to connect from 0 to 3. That's my hidden detail line. What's helpful is you can see where it's going to actually cut about. And it should be symmetrical, but that's not how I'm drawing it. There we go. And from there, then, I'm going to heavy that down to here. That's my hidden detail. And that one then will connect up to here. Okay, and there we have it. Okay, I've got the top, and now I'll heavy in the hidden detail going down. Continue that all the way down. 
Right. So there's the, the bit at the back. I've done the very top portion. Now I'm going to work on to the portion underneath it. Okay, so same principles. Now first things first, I'm going to find where the two outside, sorry, these ones here, uh, two and four, and the two four edge as it runs down. Okay, there are actually those points there, so I'm happy with those. Now what I need to do is I need to find these points here actually, this one and this one. Okay, so here are the two points I'm now going to start projecting backwards, here and here. So working my way backwards, this point, okay, and this one. Right, now that I'm after working my way backwards, somewhere along those lines is going to be points, okay? And those points are actually on the edges from 0 to 1. So if I follow it down, look, 0 to 1. If I follow it down, where is it going to be? So 0 to 1 is here. So that's where the point is going to be. Okay, so I found this one. And the other one is on the edge from 0 to 3. 0 to 3 in the plan view. That's where it's going to be. Okay, and like we had previously in the elevation where we brought it down, I'm going to do the same thing on the lower part. There's going to be a point here. Which is on the edge from 0 to 2. And a point here which is on the edge from 0 to 4. And there's my two points. Okay. So, in regards to what I have to heavy in, all these are going to go in as hidden detail. Make sure I'm using the right pencil. So from here to here. So the whole way along, likewise with this one. Likewise with this one. And this one. Okay, so there's my hidden detail underneath it. Um, I would also have an edge in here, so just a little bit in there. Go in as hidden detail there, and this little bit in here would also go in as hidden detail. So I just like to connect them up and just put a little dot in there, absolutely fine. Okay, so that's my hidden detail from the plan view put in. Now I have to find those points on those lines as well. So the two one is already done. Now that two connects around the back to the tree. So how would I find that? So where it hits there, I have to bring it up and hit right here by the looks of it. Okay. So that's around the back of it. So I'm gonna go the whole way there. Okay, so there's the two to this one. Now this one then connects over to here. Once again, it goes in as hidden detail. Okay, and from there it comes around to the front point. So I have to find this one here, this point right there. And it looks like it's coming up to here. Yeah, it'll just be a little bit of my own accuracy. That point there, connect up to there. And then back down to here. And then I can heavy in this edge. Okay. And there you have it, guys. Um, Quite a complex uh, little question there, okay, just in working out the, the kind of hidden detail. I just realized I have one other line to put in there. Don't forget these because you would lose a couple of marks just for not putting those kind of simple things in, okay? We've kind of worked out the four faces. There's this one at the front, the front, then the back face was there, and then this was the other back face, and I did the same at the top. Um, now, based on the symmetry, symmetry of the object, I'm assuming at this point and this point should be in the same line. Just the fact my pencils are getting a little bit blunt here, my own little bit of inaccuracies have probably come into a tiny, tiny little bit. Now, it might not be 100%, but it, based on the plan view, it looks like it is. Okay? Um, but overall, that's how you complete the question. Okay? That there is the part B you've done. Complete the elevation and plan of the intersecting solids. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the final question, A4 at the bottom right of the page. Right. So this question here, it says, the image on the right shows a modern chair design. So the image on the right shows a modern chair design. It includes a curved plywood back. So you can see the chair, and we've kind of got the back portion where someone rests their back in as they're sitting down on the cushion. 
uh, based on a cylinder which is truncated and shaped as shown. So truncated has been cut at an angle. The drawing shows the plan in complete elevation, so it's complete the elevation, and end view of the plywood back of a similar chair. The partially completed surface development of the back has been projected from the end view. Part A, complete the elevation. So we have to do this a little bit here first. So they've given us the plan. They've given us the end elevation of it. Okay, and we're just talking about here, not the legs or anything like that, just the wooden portion. All we have to do is we have to complete the elevation. So normal orthographic rules will apply here. What we're going to do is we're going to find a series of points on that. So they've given us a, a portion of it already done. Now we're going to find this guy. So from here, plan view, that would come straight up. This point here would also come straight up. Now these two points here, if you follow the lines, are in reference to this one. So if I follow this over, you can see there they're done at the same height. Okay, so why bring that across? That would come over here, up from this point here, it has to go directly across. Now I've got two more points. There's another point in my elevation. There's another. Okay. And the challenge I'm faced with here is I also have to find this one. Okay, so there's an additional point. So what am I going to do with that? I'm going to bring this one down. Okay, it'll also go across because it has to be somewhere along there. And when it comes down, it'll project down at 45 degrees. Hit that line there. And be very careful here. It's where it's hitting the vertical line right here and across. And on that line then, there's going to be a point here on the curve. So that will then come up. A point here on the curve. That will then come up. And I can locate two further points. One there. And one there. And then all we're going to do, it is still curving here, so it doesn't meet necessarily in a straight line. It's going to go up, through that one, through that one. Okay, I'm going to put that in. So there is first bit done. Same thing. There's the curve of this side. Okay, so there we have it. It says there, part A, complete the elevation. Done. Part B, it says complete the surface development of the object. Okay, they have a partially completed surface development, but essentially what it's like they're trying to do is like they're trying to take this back base and it's like they're trying to fold it out flat. Okay, they've actually given us the overall length of it and they've given us a portion of the height. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use measurements from our plan view. What they would have already done, okay, you can see in the top portion here, which is in kind of this section, they probably already would have taken these measurements here that little distance, because it's a curved surface, we have to take the closest accurate distance on the curve, so we split our curve up into sections. Now, they would have already measured those. Let's so check those. Yeah, it's working out perfect. Now, they've done the sections. If I label this, and I was to start, I'm just thinking, yeah, let's say this was out here. So, if I was to label this, let's say this was zero. This here is a point right there. I'm going to call that one. I've got this one here, which is two. This which is three. Four, five, six, point here, seven, and all the way to eight. Okay, so if I was to find those on this surface, okay, um, zero would be along here, then one would be here, two would be on that line, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is on the outside. Five, six, seven, eight, zero, one, two are very, very close to each other. Well, technically, one is like this bit. Then number one, sorry, zero is this bit. One goes all the way up to this point. Two goes all the way up to this point. Three goes up to this point. Four up to the top. Five, six, seven goes up to here. And eight goes up to here. Okay, before it starts to curve. So we now need to find all of those. So imagine we started at one, zero, sorry. We started at zero, which is there. And we're finishing at eight. Okay, so I need to find all those other little ones in between. Now, because these sections are the same, all split up into 36 degrees, I'm going to assume then that this one here isn't one, but it's actually two. Then two goes on to three, 
3 goes on to 4. So we need to find 5, 6, 7, and we also need to find 1. So to find 1, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the distance, the closest accurate distance from 0 to 1 on my compass. That distance there, I'm just going to mark it. And I come to 0 over here, and I'm simply going to mark it like that. And that is where 1 is. Now, that distance will be the same for 7, so from 8, I'm also going to mark it backwards. Okay, so I've now found that distance. I want to find 4, 5, and 6. So from 4, 3 to 4, or from 4 to 5, sorry, I should say. I'm going to take that distance there on the compass, and then from 4, I'm going to mark that. That'll be 5, and that'll be the same as the distance to 6. So now that I've found those, I've now found 1, I've now found 5, 6, and there's obviously 7. So to complete the surface development then, simply a case, from 0, I'm going to do a vertical line up. From 1, 2 would be the same. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So after doing all my vertical lines, I now know the height of 0 and 8. It should be across here. That's where 0's height is. That's where 8 is. Now I need to find the height for this one here will be 1 and 7. So I'll mark those, so bring the line across. So there's 1. There's 7. Now I want to do the same for 6 and 2. So there's 2. And there's six, and finally three and five. Bring that one across, should be to there. Okay, and all we're going to do now, I'm going to heavy in, tap it, because there are vertical lines going up. And then what we want to do? Oh, are they vertical? I think they were. Yeah, they were vertical up to here. Yeah, and then from here, as best you can. Sketch in the curve. So there's that curve on this side. Continue on. You want to make sure the object looks as symmetrical as possible. There we go. And I'm just going to come along with my darker pencil here now. HB. Maybe all that. In. Okay. And there we have it. There is our surface development completed for the question A4. Okay, so just tick that one off. I'm going to zoom out here, get back into the center of our screen. So, a quick recap. Okay, so there was the four questions from the 2022 exam paper. Um, you can see the importance in a little bit of, uh, obviously, accuracy, having good sharp pencils, okay. Um, but the first question here was based on skew lines, short horizontal distance. This one here was based off of conics, okay. This one here, intersection of solids. A little bit tricky, obviously, in kind of uh, putting in all the hidden detail lines there. Very, very important, okay. Um, and then this one down here was actually an orthographic question with a little bit on surface developments, okay? But a very, very attemptable one here if you understand your skew lines and there's only two types, so you should know those off by heart. And then these two probably would have been the little bit of um, challenges uh, to get your full marks in this topic, okay? So that there, guys, was the 2022 uh, Leibniz Source Section A questions. Hope you found that helpful, okay?